white workers in America who are making uh, less money than their fathers or their grandfathers uh, relatively or you know, percentage-wise are being courted today. They're being courted by politicians who are making overt appeals to their chauvinism. Um, and that is seductive because, you know, when your check is dwindling, you know, um, you, you ask questions. When your power of purchasing is diminishing week by week and when your taxes go up, you ask questions. So, of course, the answers that are being thrown to them, not just by the politicians, but by the politicians on the one hand and by the media, the mass media on the other, what's being answered is this. Well, it's those, those uh, welfare mothers. It's those niggers in the ghetto. It's those prisoners who are living like princes in prison. I mean, those kinds of lies really have a seductive appeal because they mesh with that white supremacist chauvinistic worldview that they possess already. What is um, not told to them is the corporate welfare. You know, the, uh, I saw a report a few days ago about the uh, Arnold, uh, what's it, Arnold Daniels Midlands Corporation, this massive, I mean, one of the world's uh, largest corporations that sells more grains and more corn than any other company in, a, in the world, you know, contributing something like $25 million to the Dole campaign. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and, but they also get price supports, you see, from the federal government. So it's like, for want of a better word, a corporate kickback, you see. But it's nothing compared to what they get from tax monies, you know. Uh, those who, who, who grow poisons like tobacco, you know, in the Southlands, um, government subsidies and so forth. That's not called welfare, that's called something else. But it is people's tax money being invested um, to massive multi-million uh, dollar corporations, you see. So people are upset when they see the poor get a little, but they don't see the wealthy, the very wealthy, get a lot. And there's a kind of um, imbalance there, but it's an imbalance that's aided and abetted by the media and pumped by politicians. And to the average guy out there, the average Joe and the average uh, jo Josephine, well, they eat it up like candy because it feeds into their own um, unchallenged and cherished ideals that have been embedded in their consciousness of white supremacy and their, their perceptions of others as less than they. Um, I mean, I, when I hear about people talk about uh, poor people, I have a vested interest in that because I grew up in the projects. I was a poor person, I still am, you know. But I understand that what's happening is poor people are being um, the whipping boy of the system once again. I mean, it's no coincidence that in all of the major industrial states where those corporations are downsizing, to use their term, which is you know, firing the many and, and making their uh, corporate image lean and mean. Well, it's also in those states that the poor are taking a hell of a beating, you see. Um, in your state of New York, you know, um, people are being cut off of educational funds so that they can't further their education and better their life. I mean, that's the only way to do it in this culture. Right here in Pennsylvania, uh, a Senate subcommittee passed a bill by a majority to cut over 250,000 people off of Medicare. I mean, and what happened, and they didn't expect it to happen, is you had a revolt from a wide segment of Pennsylvania, not just, you know, benighted black Philadelphia, but you know, people in other counties where people are scuffling and, and the ability of that check to cover their government uh, Medicare funds is a difference of life and death. Well, people all over felt that pain. And because they understood that that was um, something that was being cut by this government, they were able to focus it that way. Well, the government turned over in a matter of 24 hours. Oh no, took it out of the bill and changed the character of that bill. It's interesting to note that the next day the next day, Larry, they passed another bill, or at least they're um, um, debating about a bill, to cut prisoners off of welfare. There are some people who are in prison still get welfare. But you see that political switch, that political move? 
I mean, but it's the same trend all over this country. And I think what it really talks about is fundamentally the flight of capital from the United States, or at least the flight of industrial capital from the United States, the flight of the industrial um, factories and manufacturers from the United States. I mean, America is really um, in a funny time, you know, is a service economy, you know. Uh, in terms of factories and industries, well, they began after the NAFTA, of course. Well, let's go across the Rio Grande. They don't have OSHA. They don't have, uh, you know, any of these uh, uh, communistic socialist statutes that threaten our profit bottom line, our motives. So we can go, oh, 60 miles, go down into uh, Mexico, open up a Maquila Doris, or we can go to Indonesia and open up a, a, a Reebok factory and pay uh, Indonesian women um, 23 cents a day and make uh, sneakers and sell them for 500, 250, $500 to the American market and make, you know, 2,000% on every sale. I mean, you know, the profit motive is all, you see. And because politicians have aided and abetted that industrial and capital flight, well now, they're seeing, you know, the repercussions of that, you know. And they're taking it out on those least able to defend themselves, the poor, you know, the working poor, uh, the so-called middle class, you see, um, the working class. You know, in America, it seems as if, if you listen to how politicians talk about poor people, it's as if poverty itself is a sin, you know. It's, a, it's like when they talk about people on welfare, it's as if it's some kind of great character flaw, you see, you know. It's, it's like they've committed a great evil by not being born a DuPont, you know, a Getty, wealthy. When in fact, when one looks at the history of this country, most of the people who came to this country, and I ain't just talking about Africans who came from West Africa in chains, but most of the millions of people who came here from Europe, came as the dregs of Europe, with a bag, you know. And they didn't come with a bag of gold, they came with a bag of rags or the rags on their backs. Many escaping the same kind of repression that's rearing its ugly head in America today, you see. Many Irish came from, you know, the famines that ravaged Ireland because the British landlords were sucking their blood dry by raising the prices of, of, of rent, you know. And now it's a crime to be poor. Mumi Abu Jamal's life is valuable to all human life. Mumi Abu Jamal's life is valuable to this earth. Mumi Abu Jamal's wisdom, his knowledge is valuable to our offspring to the young, to the unborn. We got a free Mumi Abu Jamal, brick by brick, wall by wall. We have to free Mumi Abu Jamal. Let's send a message May 17th. <laughs>